Okay, I'm talking about how to use the Pro Performance Optimizer by Triphasic Training. It's a 10 and 20 calculator basically used to help progress your training. So you may be training for a couple weeks, two to three, and then you need to find out what program you need next. You actually may need the same program. So it's not going to tell you something that you don't need. It's essentially a rate limiter tool and it identifies the weakest link and that's what you train and this is why you, we progress people so fast much faster than any periodization model i've ever had so basically all you need the metrics that you need is a 10 a 20 yard dash with the 10 yard split so you can do that with timing gates or you can do that taking a side video of a 20 put up a a, a a cone at the 10 and then just get the video time when you cross the 10 and the 20 and you can get this pretty much done i'll put a link into the performance optimizer uh, tool link but it's the most precision based training tool for athletes true individual based needs for training you know so you know exactly what you need and what it'll do is accelerate progress of your results faster than I've ever seen it, even in my most elite athletes where it's very hard we have to get very specific based upon what they need when I test them, I know what their weakest link is, and this is how we do it, and this is where um, this is what we do. So go to Triphasic Calculators on a Triphasic Training website. You're going to go to the uh, uh, View Training Calculator. So and it's called the Pro Performance Optimizer 1020 Calculator. And what'll transpire is you're going to basically put in a a training time, um, or your 10 yard split. And then let's say you put in your your uh, 20 yard time, and basically we recommend that you train speed in the weight room, and speed is obviously a lighter base program, more plyometrics. You also always do your running, but but ultimately plyometrics. Uh, if you like squatting, squatting at light loads as low as 50 to 25 percent, which essentially turns into jump squats at my program. Now let's say you ran the same 20 time but your 10 was different that's going to tell me that you need to train strength okay so that means your heavy loads above 80 percent and i'll get into that here next of what strength power or speed means let me see if i can guess a speed um somewhere around there power there would be your power zone we recommend that you train power okay and i'll get into what those three different things there's only three results here to keep this fairly simple now, as we go back to this, um, here you go. Basically, if you get a strength reading, it means you're above 80% of your max. If you get a power reading, you're between 78 to 55% of your max. Um, one thing that I want to make people aware of, I'll, I'll let you click on this, is the tissue PowerPoint article I wrote where there's a, um, I'm going to expand more on this, but there's a, a, a time, a point in the power zone where you tr focus more on muscle, and you focus more on, and, and there's another point where you focus more on tendons. There's a loading point, and that's what this article is about. So if you want to click on that on the PowerPoint, um, it's a very good um, article I wrote about somewhat discovering it. Now, if you get a speed reading, then your speed is 25%, let's say, of your back squat, which I actually have people do hex deadlift jumps. I can do bar or uh, squat jumps with the bar and will go as high as 50 to 55 percent so you can do band squat jump or banded squats whatever it may be but this is the three uh results that you get now there are more results coming down the um soon i will release a advanced system of this where you can get five to six indicators of training but this is the basic simplest one i actually use this all the time if i know i have problems i'll go to the more advanced stuff but again um basically again it's the fastest way to pro uh, progress training there's no mindless guessing of the training with this training tool when do i do it i do it every two to three weeks so basically i do it on a monday i get the results and then we put the athlete in that program here's the crazy thing when i when i ran this model and so did my other coaches um across the actually the world I have coaches i gave uh, the concept to and then they ran the models for me also and their athletes I was shocked how many athletes, the typical periodization, it was not optimal for them. This tool said, just progress them through. And when we looked at it, it was completely reversed. So yes, I've been doing the complete opposite with athletes for over 20, uh, 17 years at that point. So then I realized the reverse period of periodization model was better for them. How do I know which is better? I don't. I actually still have to test them. So 
like the example I just gave you, here's the crazy thing when athletes buy in is that they have a receiver and a linebacker, let's say. They both ran a 2-7 in the 10 or something similar close, but they had different times, or I'm sorry, 2-7 in the 20. They had different times in the 10. They're different types of athlete. Well, you can see they would be split into two different training programs. So when I say that, the wide receiver actually has to do strength to get faster. Okay, then I'm just giving you an example. He might do that for two to three weeks. You retest them. They might go to power. They might go to speed. They might go to power right before training camp because that's a weak link if each one of these are three weeks. The athlete, too, was a linebacker in a previous slide. So he actually is maybe he's a veteran and this guy's a young guy. He's going to probably follow this. I don't know for sure, but we would test him. He would If that first reading, he needed speed. Second reading, he needed power. And then he might progress to strength. And then back to speed because speed is a lot of my veteran athletes and my athletes have been training here 10, 12 years have this end up doing speed a lot most of the summer, actually. But that's then when they test, they keep – that's their best – testing point is that they get the results they wanted out of speed so each one of those would progress two to three weeks you do two to three weeks so here's a training example of a first year lineman like what will happen a lot with my freshmen and i use in football as an example but even my freshmen in different sports they test into strength they test into strength they test into strength a lot of high school coaches will find this might be your model and and they may not get into power till later and then you get a fourth-year receiver or some athlete that's been with you for the whole year or for four years or five, maybe even ten like me, the progression could be speed, power, speed, speed. Sometimes they'll drop out of power again or whatever it may be. Now, my advanced athletes, I do every two weeks. Non-advanced athletes, I might actually do every three weeks. So this is just an excellent tool for you to take a look at and realize that you can progress your athletes at a faster, more effective pace in the training process.